If I were to sum up what a bodybuilding prep is like, uh, I would say it's basically a controlled starvation while also simultaneously training as hard as you possibly can in the pursuit of maintaining as much muscle mass as possible. This video is going to be a relatively deep dive into the real raw numbers and the data that I collected in preparing my client Aiden for his first bodybuilding show. I also have a playlist with a total of 36 videos documenting Aiden's prep and they're mostly in the form of workouts that I put him through along with the show day videos for the two shows that we did. When Aiden and I started working together, we had 21 weeks to prepare and his starting weight on December 25th was 187.9 pounds. And yes, he sent me his first check-in on Christmas day and he really is a diehard for bodybuilding and he just lives and breathes the sport. And then on May 19th, 20 weeks after that first check-in, he weighed 156.2 pounds. And for reference for him, he is about 5'8 to 5'9. The process of manipulating his nutrition, training, and cardio protocols can be sort of thought as turning the knobs of a dial higher as the prep continues with the nutrition, training, and cardio. Each three has their own separate knob. And by the end of the prep, we basically just had all three knobs turn as high as we could get them. And I'm gonna start off with the specifics of his nutrition plan. So in total, there were seven changes made and the numbers that I'm gonna put up on the screen are what he followed for each week. And they're not necessarily perfect as they don't account for any of the refeed days that I was giving him, but more so to show the general trend of how I just basically slowly starved him. The starting plan for Aiden was 180 to 190 grams of protein, 500 grams of carbohydrates, and around 100 to 130 grams of fats. And his total calories were around 4,000. Uh, when I'm putting the protein up on the screen, I only was tracking quality sources of protein from animal meats, eggs, whey, yogurt. It doesn't account for any of the trace proteins, so the total calories isn't necessarily perfect, but gives you a general idea. The goal with the starting plan wasn't necessarily weight loss, as with his previous coach, he had been loosely eating like 4,500 to 5,000 calories, which was debatable, I think, and possibly more than he needed. But uh, so we were more so just kind of getting things set in place and we were tracking everything a little bit more meticulously and we're gonna start building up the habits required for him to be successful towards the end of prep when things were gonna to have to be very dialed in and the food intake was going to have to be a lot stricter and just get him in a meal prepping routine. This high carb intake also correlated with the style of his workouts I had him doing, which I'll get into more shortly. And we followed this starting plan for two weeks and it kept his body weight the same at around the 188 pound mark. On week three of his prep, I cut his calories by about 500. His protein stayed consistent at around that 180 to 190 gram range. His carbohydrates went down to 440 grams, and then his fats also went down to 90 grams. The higher fats were giving him some digestive distress, so that was one of the reasons I pulled calories from the fats opposed to more carbohydrates. We ended up following this plan for two more weeks, and his weight dropped from 188 pounds to 185.3, which is about an average loss per week of about 1.3 pounds. So for these weeks three and four, this was more so a kind of guess and check to see how his weight would respond to an initial drop in calories. And I knew that his weight loss was gonna to need to be a faster rate. So that's where come week five, I gave him the third plan. And the changes I made for here was I kept the protein the same at the 180 to 190. I pulled his carbohydrates down again to 350 grams, whereas fats remained the same at 90. So his total calorie intake at this point was around 3000. This was also about the time where I gave him his second training program where those workouts weren't nearly as demanding of carbohydrates because his glycogen reserves were no longer as full as humanly possible compared to when he was eating like the 450 to 500 gram range. We ended up following this third plan for a total of four weeks and he went from 185.3 pounds to 178.3 pounds, averaging about a 1.75 pounds lost each week where the first few weeks, the weight loss was a little bit more aggressive. And then towards the end of these four weeks, that's when his weight loss began to slow down. So then in order to keep things moving, I had to pull his food down again. So now this fourth change, he had the same protein again at about 180 to 190 grams. His carbs came down again to 260 grams. And then I pulled his fats down as well to 70 grams. This was another drop of about 500 calories. So now his total calorie intake each day was about 2,500. We ended up following this plan for three weeks 
and his weight dropped from 178.3 pounds to 172.4 pounds, averaging about a two pound loss each week. And this is generally speaking about the maximum that I wanted him to lose each week. Towards the end of that third week, weight loss was starting to slow again, and there was definitely more fat to lose, so we pulled his food down even further. His protein stayed the same at 180 to 190 grams. Carbs came down again to 200 grams, and then his fats came down as well to 55 grams, which brought his calorie intake around to 2,200. We ended up following this for five more weeks, which were weeks 12 through 16 of this prep, and at this point, his weight had dropped from 172.4 pounds to 163.1 pounds, and then our weight loss for each week, we were averaging about 1.86 pounds loss. So weeks 9 through 11, regarding his hunger, like definitely he was starting to feel the effects for weeks 12 through 16. This is where the fatigue of just being in a steep calorie deficit for so long, it was kind of starting to take a hold on him. How do you feel? Physically, I feel like shit. Mentally, <laughs> uh, I got some motivation and I'm, I'm definitely excited for the show, but uh, there are moments where I feel like shit. <laughs> and he was finally not able to beat his previous week's gym performance as consistently, because like up, up until this point, he was just, every day he was coming in, he was hitting PRs on most things. But it wasn't until this phase where performance wasn't necessarily improving each time, but also was the eighth week that he had been following that training program I gave him. So I'd consider him improving his training performance for two months straight in a fairly steep calorie deficit was definitely a big win for the both of us. At this point in prep, he was definitely lean and he was close to being ready, but I definitely thought he had some more fat to lose especially in the hamstrings on the back of his leg. So with a little over a month left of prep, we started things off with a final conditioning push where I increased his protein to 200 grams. As the leaner he gets and the longer he spends in a calorie deficit, the more likely he is to lose muscle. And also when it comes to getting super lean for a show, there's going to be some level of muscle loss to it. So I tried to mitigate this by increasing his protein. Fats got reduced to 40 grams, and we kept his carb intake at 200 to help fuel his training performance. Because at a certain point, if you don't have the carbohydrates in your system, you're not going to be able to, to fuel that training performance. Because in this pursuit of holding as much muscle mass as possible, we need his training performance to at least stay relatively stable. Try not take too big of hits in performance. Because if your performance starts to go way down, you are more than likely losing some muscle mass. So that's where I wanted to give him some fuel to make sure that he's fueling his workouts. But at this point in prep, you're just coming in there and pushing as hard as you can. And training with the intensity, that is how you're going to keep as much muscle mass as possible. And then we followed that diet for three weeks, and his weight went from 161.1 pounds to 160.4 pounds, and we were averaging just under about one pound loss each week. The rate of weight loss at this point was definitely slower than at the beginning, because when we are so lean like this, you can't just continuously push someone with super low calories just for a prolonged amount of time. Like that is how you lose muscle mass. So we'd push hard for three, four, maybe five days. And then I would give him one or two refeed days, kind of let his body de-stress, get some fuel back, let him recover. And then we'd push hard again for three, four, five days. And it was kind of just a alternating cycle of push hard, pull back, give him some calories, push hard, pull back, give him some calories. And doing this for the, those three weeks, we definitely saw improvements in his conditioning but I thought we could push for even more conditioning for the final three weeks of prep. So this is where we really brought the hammer down and his carbs were all the way down to 100 grams and they were basically coming from vegetables. He would get a little bit of carbohydrates around his workouts, but carbohydrates were basically gone. His fats were super low to 30 grams and his protein stayed at that 200 grams. So his total calories at this point were around 1,700. Surprisingly for these last three weeks, his training performance actually hung in there fairly well, and he was able to maintain his strength for the most part, besides a lot of his pushing exercises, which is a fairly common theme when it comes to being severely dieted. I'd say it's safe to say that this conditioning push definitely worked, as he was one of the leanest guys on stage for both of the shows that he did. So that was the protocol we ran to get as much body fat off of him as possible. And now I'm gonna go into how we turned up the dial for his training program and how he kept as much muscle mass as possible. His training consisted of three distinct phases, each of them correlating with the diet that I was giving him. And no matter the phase we were in, the training split that we found that worked best for him was a five day training split where each muscle he trained was gonna be hit two times each week. And then as for the total volume 
it kind of depended on the program and what type of rep schemes we were doing, but his weekly average of working sets for each muscle ranged between six and 20 sets each week. So for the first training program, when his carbohydrates were high, there was more of an emphasis on workouts that were demanding of carbohydrates since he had all of this fuel. And we did this with higher volume, lower intensity, faster reps, more reps, focused on getting a good squeeze. But as his carbohydrate intake decreased, the stimulus of the workouts I was going for shifted towards where he didn't need as many carbohydrates to perform the workouts. And how we did this was he was doing less total sets, so his volume was lower, but his intensity was higher. I'll get into how we did that shortly. The reps we did were slower, and the reps were more focused on the eccentric and going slow into the stretch. So as I just showed, his carb intake at the beginning of prep, super high, 450, 500 grams which for a person that is eight in size, that is a shit ton of fuel. So this initial training program I gave him took advantage of that. And how we did this was with workouts that were more focused on higher volume, lower intensity, more focused on concentrics, doing a bunch of rep. And it's more so like that pump based or sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. This type of hypertrophy isn't necessarily adding like real hard contractile tissue, but it's more so aiming for what is called cell swelling. And what it comes along with this cell swelling when your pumps are super big, skin splitting pumps, uh, what comes along with this is it improves the cell's ability to store as many carbohydrates and fluid as possible. And it helps give the muscles a fuller, bigger look, which is an important concept for later on in this prep. His lots of volume for this initial phase came from four working sets for each exercise where he would do two working sets of 15 to 20 reps followed by two sets of 12 to 15 reps, and he would only take that fourth set to failure. The tempo he followed was still controlled, not anything too slow, and his eccentrics were around like a two to three second count, as we were more concerned on the concentric and doing a bunch of reps and getting a good squeeze and nasty skin splitting pumps. The other common rep scheme we did during these first four weeks comes from N1 Education, and the primary goal are these skin splitting pumps and to get the muscles as full of blood, carbohydrates, fluids, you name it, whatever can go into your muscles, we're trying to push as much of it as possible into them during this rep scheme. And what this rep scheme is, is you're gonna find a weight that you can do for 12 to 15 reps, but you're only going to be doing sets of eight. You're gonna do eight reps, you're gonna rest for 30 seconds. You're gonna do eight more reps, you're gonna rest for 30 seconds. And you're going to keep flipping between eight reps, 30 seconds rest. You're gonna do this for a total of eight rounds, and uh, if you haven't done this, you should just try it. And you need to have a shit ton of carbohydrates in your system to do this type of workout. And if you do do it, your pump is going to be insane. All right, eight of them and it's over. <laughs> Good. Two more. Nice. Wow. Nice. Dude. How's like, the pump? I can't lift my. <laughs> These things are bulging. Nice. I can't. I can't flex them. <laughs> you can't move. I feel stuck. <laughs> I can barely move. Okay, nice. Now on to the second training phase of his prep, which lasted from weeks five to twelve. His carbohydrate intake was still enough to fuel like a hypertrophy-focused workout, but it wasn't nearly as high as when we had initially started. So now at this point, the stimulus of these workouts, it began to shift from the super high volume, a bunch of reps towards the lower volume, less reps. And how we did this for this program is instead of the sets of 15 to 20, 15 to 20, 12 to 15, 12 to 15, we would do a set of 12 to 15. We'd increase the weight, do a set of 10 to 12, increase the weight again, and then he would do a final failure set of eight to 10 reps. So the reps, so the weights are going up, the reps are coming down, and the volume came down just a little bit. The tempo for these exercises also had a slower eccentric than in the previous program, and we began to add some pauses at that bottom in that stretch position as well, as we're looking to increase the focus on that eccentric loading and just having more of an emphasis on that lengthened position. Instead of doing the eight by eights with 30 seconds rest, we replaced them with a squeeze stretch superset, which I'll link to this video at the end. And essentially they're a type of drop set that will still give you a juicy pump, but it's more of an emphasis on that lengthened muscle length. And this was the program where he saw basically consistent progression throughout the full eight weeks until around that eighth week where progression was finally not just like inevitable and going to happen. But that was also the week where his carbs were dropped down at a lower point as well. 
Which brings me to his third and final phase, which was training through weeks 13 to 20, which would bring him to the end of prep. When his carbohydrates are super low, the goal when designing that program was to make sure that he could still train hard even though he had relatively low carbohydrates in his system. So this third and final training phase aimed to address this issue by shifting the stimulus from that starting high volume approach where we're more focused on the concentrics and getting a bunch of reps. This was lower volume, higher intensity, slower eccentrics, more focused on that stretch portion of each rep. So what was important for this was picking exercises that were going to be hardest for him in that stretch. And we also began to incorporate lengthened partials for some of the exercises as well. His overall training volume each week was also lower, but in order to make up for this, we increased his training intensity. And we did this by adding the lengthened partials is one. Uh, slower eccentrics is also another thing. And then we also did a rest pause set where he'd do a set as hard as he could. Then he would rest for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then he would do three to five more reps. So we did two working sets of this in compared to the previous program where he did three working sets of the 12 to 15, 10 to 12, 8 to 10. So it's less total sets, higher intensity. And then another rep scheme we did were CAS sets. And if you watch any of the videos I did with him at the end of prep, they're pretty much in every single workout. And fair warning, they might be the worst thing that you've ever done or experienced in the gym. Yes, sir. Come on, here it is. Nice. Try and hold. Perfect. Get there again. That's dirty, man. Improvements in his training performance during this third and final phase was a lot harder to come by and not nearly as linear as it was for the previous two phases, but that's kind of to be expected when you're super dieted down and your calorie intake is super low. Training does not fucking feel good, I'll tell you that. Training hard on a bulk is easy, it's enjoyable, you have all the feel you need. The pumps are good, your joints feel good, and PRs, if you have everything set up, PRs should come fairly easily. Training hard at the end of a contest prep, it fucking sucks. Like you are running on fumes, your pumps are lackluster, your joints are starting to hurt. Just overall, it's not a fun thing to do. So for Aiden to continuously hit PRs through the majority of his prep, and also through those super low calorie days where he felt like crap. Physically, I feel like shit. Energy levels were super slow, slept terrible. His ability to dig deep and push himself, even on those days, speaks to his ability to dig really deep and push himself really hard. And for those of you who watch those videos where he's at the end of prep, but still hitting PRs on the pendulum squat, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Go. Oh. Yo. Oh. You can call it there. All right, here's one more. Oh boy. No. Push. There we go. Now on to the third dial that we were cranking up throughout his prep, which was his cardio. And at the beginning of the prep, we weren't necessarily trying to lose weight. So we didn't have any really set cardio and he was just getting in moderate levels of activity. I think his daily step count was around maybe 9,000 steps with work and school, but uh, we weren't terribly concerned about monitoring it super close. The first real implementation of cardio for him was at week nine, where he was aiming to get 10,000 steps each day, and then three to four days each week, he would walk on the treadmill at, I think it was halfway, 50% inclined, at 3.3 speed. And he would do that for 20 minutes. Then the next change was made week 14 where we increase his cardio to every day of 30 minutes on the treadmill at 3.5 speed and now the incline was set to all the way up and his daily step count was reaching about 12,000. We followed this up until week 19 where this was our full hard guns blazing conditioning push where each dial for the training nutrition and cardio was turned all the way up. We increased his cardio to 45 minutes every day on the fully inclined treadmill at 3.5 speed and his daily step count was around 14 to 15,000. So typically changes made to the cardio plan will alternate with changes made to his nutrition plan. So for example, for his prep, we started cardio on week 19, then his diet was changed week 12. Cardio was increased again on week 14, and then diet was changed again on week 16 and 18. And then when it came to all systems go conditioning push on week 19, that's where we cranked everything up for the last three weeks as we tried to get him as lean as possible. So all of this yapping brought us to this look on May 19th, which was one week before his first show. 
When preparing for a show, the final week leading up to the show is known as peak week, and it's not nearly as intense as the weeks prior. You more so treat peak week as a landing the plane approach, as all the hard work is basically done, and now your main job for this final week leading up to the show is to reduce stress and do what needs to be done to present his physique in the best possible way. Typically, this is done by dropping your cardio and keeping food low for the first part of that week, but then the days leading up to the show, your carb intake will go back up and you're looking to bring in as many carbs into your muscles, making them appear bigger and fuller. And this is where the adaptations made in that first program hopefully helped him and carried over, helping his muscles hold on to as much carbs and water as possible. And this is what this looks like in action. So when I was trying to peak him for the first show, this was his look on Wednesday morning after low carbohydrate days on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So on Wednesday, his carb up started with an intake of 300 grams of carbohydrates. Then Thursday, he had 400 grams. And then Friday, he had 500 grams of carbohydrates. So this is what that transformation looks like. Here he is Wednesday morning, super flat, no carbohydrates in the system. And then here he is Saturday morning after the carb up before going on stage. Then I'll also throw up a few of his stage shots as well. For this first show, hands down, one of the leanest guys in the show. And placing-wise, he ended up taking second place in True Novice, first in Novice, and then third in the Open, which at an NPC show, I would say is fairly impressive for someone his age because he is likely one of the only natural athletes on that stage. Then after that first show, we had two full weeks before we had a second show. So that first week after the show, we went back to his pre-peak week diet he trained relatively hard, and then we repeated the peak week process, but with a few adjustments for the second show. For the first show, he was super shredded, but after a few cheat meals, we saw his fullness increase dramatically. So for the second show, we aimed to come in a lot fuller, and the adjustments we made were increasing his water and his sodium intake. And this was the look we brought for that second show, and I'm going to put up some of his stage shots as well. Uh, I definitely think we were able to improve his fullness. There might have been a small sacrifice in how, in how dry he looked, but he was still, again, one of the leanest guys on the stage. For this OCB show, which was a natural show, uh, he got third place in the novice division and second place in the open class A, which I thought was possibly a debatable call in the first place. But now that I'm looking back on it, I think that last month of prep where we pushed super hard for conditioning in the, is an example of what over-dieting can look like on someone. But I do think that it was to the point where the sacrifices in the size and fullness we gave up for his conditioning may not have been worth it. And based on the winner of that natural OCB show, which was the person he got second place to, he did not have to be as lean as he did to win. And I think that had we brought the look he had on April 7th compared to that week before the show, he might have been able to win that show. All things considered, I'm extremely proud of the look that we brought to stage and proud of the work that Aiden was able to put into this prep. He followed the plan to a T. He would ask questions if he didn't know something, and I did not have to worry about him being able to execute the plan because I knew that he was just going to do it. Considering this was the look he was able to bring for his first contest prep, uh, I'd say he's off to a hell of a start. For future competitions, as he looks to compete and advance to higher level shows, the data we have from this prep of what he looked like at certain points in prep will be extremely useful, and as his career advances, conditioning will also become a bigger factor. So just knowing that he's able to get this lean is to our advantage, but also knowing that at a certain point, he will start and flatten out. And the information we gathered from this prep will be super useful in helping us see like when and where that's going to happen and how we can look to make sure that that doesn't happen as much in the future. I'll be looking to post prep recaps for my other clients that I've had as well. Uh, this is the first one I've done, so they won't be done immediately, but eventually the cards will be able for you to click on somewhere in this video. Uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see each other in the next one.